This is Twit. So this one is about, again, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but I think it comes pretty clear by the title and, you know, the you read the inside flap that this is about asteroid mining. Yeah. See, and you know what? This may seem surprising, again, to the people who know that I write books about very real subjects. Yeah. And typically, I write about technology that's about to become very important or big in people's lives. And space, particularly commercial space, I think is that. Oh, yeah. And this is why I'm planning to do several books on this. And, of course, this is the first time in a while I've done a series of books. I'm so excited to hear you say well, that. You know why? It is because I think this is probably one of the most important issues we're, we're dealing with today. Good. And that's, again, going back... A few days ago, everybody probably remembers that Jeff Bezos came out and started to talk about space colonies and, and things like that. And a lot of people immediately turned a skeptical eye to that, as they should. And I don't agree with Jeff Bezos about a lot, but I do agree with him about this. That, And I, I think there was a big piece missing in that whole presentation of the why. Right. And, and I know it's like we need more energy, but one of the things that I'm trying to do with this series of books is sort of bridge that chasm between where we are in the present to the sci-fi future everybody always imagines. Yeah. And that actually is no longer just a sci-fi... No, this you could imagine. This, this can every, happen. Yeah. And it, more importantly, it has to happen. And it has to happen for reasons of, of trying to deal with climate change, trying to deal with the vulnerability of us on this single planet. And let's put it this way. We have a limited time. To start to deal with this. And, and right now, the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change said we have 12 years to start to deal with, with climate or we're going to face a climate catastrophe. And that's why trying to lift our most carbon intensive industries off the planet is very important. And it can be done. And I'm trying in this, in this series of books, in Delta V and being the first, to show how that could be done. All right, but I want to warn people, despite all the good intentions of this, it's really great to read. <laughs> it's really fun. This is not... No, it's a, not a public service uh, message. It's not, a, you know, a, a manifesto. No, it's not Although at all. Although there's a, there's a, early on, there's a great uh, debate among the space titans. And you have, <laughs> and, they're, and it's, they're all clearly people we know. Uh, are they? Uh, well, at least one or two are. <laughs> Uh, there's an Elon I Musk. No comment. There's a Jeff Bezos. Then there are a few I don't know who they are, but uh, <laughs> including the most important one, Nathan Joyce, in here. Yes, I'm not my sure. My fictional billionaire. He's fictional. Yeah. But uh, thank God he comes along. But the, the debate among the space titans, and it's moderated by a NASA scientist. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of them, clearly the Elon Musk type, says, "We got to go to Mars. You got to yeah. colonize Mars. Mars is the future. Everybody's got to go to Mars." And another one, the probably the Jeff Bezos type, says, yeah, but first we're going to do space tourism. <laughs> and then finally, your hero, Nathan Joyce, comes along and says, you guys are full of it. <laughs> Neither one is viable yeah. or going to change the world. Yeah. And see, it's funny, when you go and talk to scientists and entrepreneurs... Is that debate going on right now? See, the reason I put it in the book is I don't think it's going on right now. It should now. be going It on. has to be going on. That's why I wanted it to be a public debate. So I threw all of that evidence in... As you mentioned, I tried to make it a really interesting, great. Uh, fractious conversation great. where people are going at each other to try to, you know, billionaires have big personalities. Yeah. They very often pull their claws in and they act very reserved. And I wanted to get to the point where re they really dust it up. They really talk yes. about why they're doing these things, why they're investing hundreds of millions or billions of dollars in it. And it's part ego. It's part, you know, lasting legacy. I want to leave a legacy. It can also be that they care about the future, but also part of it is competition and, and, a lot of that happens behind closed doors. I wanted people, I wanted readers to be able to see really what the issues are because we're at this crossroads right now where we're about to go into space. It's interesting, though, that you want to move the debate along a little I bit. I do. You don't feel like it's going in the right direction. Well, like, as I said, I think time is a factor. And again, if, if forget climate change even. I mean, we have uh, the potential for war, the Kessler syndrome. That's, you know, where you all the, the satellites blow too. up. A space war could create so much debris yeah. that we can't even get out of our Well, we just atmosphere. saw with India uh, testing. And, of course, America's done this. The USSR has done this. And we're going to see continued tests with ASAT weapons that could trap us here on this planet in just a few years. Now, we're putting, well, Elon's putting up 12,000 potential new satellites into orbit. Even just an accidental collision could cause us problems. So we've really got to be thinking about these things. The Kessler syndrome is, uh, it's actually, uh, Neil Stevenson uh, talks about it in yeah. Seven Eves, yep. is the idea that once you have some debris, it then hits it, they yeah. hit each other. Cascade of failure. It, it, it basically creates a 
a dome around the United States. Yeah, it's around a cloud of debris. Of debris that you cannot safely travel through. Yeah. And then, so we're stuck on this planet, if that happens, for possibly generations, while the planet's heating up. So right. it, here's the frustrating part. We're reaching the 50th anniversary of Apollo. It's half a century ago. And you and I both remember that. Very well. I remember my father waking me up in the middle of yeah. the night to go see it's that. A big deal. I didn't quite understand what it, why everybody was excited at the time. Yeah. But that's half a century ago. And it is amazing to me yeah. that we're just now saying, hey, let's get back to this. It's the whole universe out there. Yeah.